And then you have the story of Robert Smalls, who I think is really the most compelling story of the entire Civil War. Here, in 1862, he uh, helped, uh, he, 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 at that time he was hired out to, from one uh, slave owner to another, kind of on a rental system, to the, USS, uh, the CSS Planter, which was a small uh, vessel for the Confederate Navy. And he, Smalls, had figured out as a crew mem that he would be able to pilot the planter past the Confederate points and surrender it to the Union and maybe get his freedom. And so he led this, um, this uh, rebellion against the, the Confederates, and he was successful. And he was paraded around the North as a conquering hero. And that was uh, May 13, 1862. So we just passed the anniversary a couple of days ago. Uh, after the war, Isaac uh, uh, um, Smalls, he uh, went into business in Beaufort, South Carolina with Richard Howell Gleaves, a businessman from Philadelphia, and they opened a store to, to serve the needs of freedmen. Uh, Smalls also hired a teacher to help him study. And then in 1868, he became a state representative in the state of South Carolina. He was a Republican. He became a state senator and then a major general in the South Carolina militia. And then from 1875 to 79, and again from 1882 to 1883, he became a member of the U.S. House of Representatives, representing South Carolina's 5th Congressional District. And then 1884 to 1887, he became the congressman from the 7th Congressional District. So here you have a man who was born into slavery, who assisted in the war effort, and I didn't mention that, he did pilot the planter and the USS Isaac Smith for the U.S. Navy during the remainder of the war. And so Robert Smalls has a very incredible story. This is the kind of stuff in the modern era that we should, when we look back at the Civil War period, this is the stuff we should be celebrating. You know, we've discussed in the past about getting rid of Confederate memorials and everything is about, oh, slavery and writing it out of our textbook. Now, this is the story that we need to be talking about, how one man was able to be born into slavery and then assist the U.S. government at the risk of his own life for his freedom and then get rewarded with a seat in Congress to represent people black and white. This is the most compelling story of the Civil War and the reason we really need to take a closer look at this time period. We're going to actually take a look right now about the life and legacy of Robert Smalls. It'll take just a second. Well, the long Civil Rights Movement, though, actually does go back to, to people like Robert Smalls who indeed were trying to pass and propose legislation that would give African Americans equal opportunity to, to, to work, equal opportunity in public accommodations, as you've heard, uh, equal access to, to the ballot, and basically dignity. And Smalls' his own life sort of, sort of sets the, the tone for that, in that he was a, a, a fighter. He, he challenged discrimination every opportunity and every chance that he, he got. Now, some of you know, I, as, as you heard Helen say this morning, I worked with um, her family to develop the, the ex exhibition that is now at the, the Charleston Museum. So I spent a year with Robert Smalls, you might say. That is, re reading all of his works, looking for his pictures, reading everything that I, I could about him. And, and again, as you've heard, this, this man was a very unique individual in that he, he put to lie some of the beliefs about slavery in this country, some of the beliefs about African-American talent and abilities in this country at a time basically when most people felt if you were black, you were inferior. In fact, Smalls had one of his colleagues in the house tell him that. And of course, he challenged him on, on the spot. So. Um, Robert Smalls, as I said, has, has had a tremendous impact on the historiography, on, on Reconstruction, and on the, on the Civil Rights Movement. And Smalls was a loyal Republican. On August 22, 1912, he wrote a letter to 
Minnesota U.S. Senator Newt Nelson. And in that letter, he said, quote, I never lose sight of the fact that had it not been for the Republican Party, I never would have been an office holder of any kind from 1862 to the present. And the words uh, that became famous, he described his party as the party of Lincoln, which unshackled the necks of four million human beings. And he wrote this line on September 12, 1912, in a letter expressing his anxiety over the looming presidential election. And he concluded this, uh, another letter with, quote, I ask that every colored man in the North who has a vote to cast would cast that vote for the regular Republican Party and thus bury the Democratic Party so deep that there will not be seen even a bubble coming from the spot where the burial took place. That was Robert Smalls. But Robert Smalls decided he was not going to be a victim. He was going to take matters into his own hands, and he did. He did not subscribe to victimhood. But that's all we seem to have out of the Democratic Party of today. Everyone's a victim. And then, of course, uh, you, we're not allowed to teach American exceptionalism. So in our schools, we're not allowed to talk about Robert Smalls because he actually made something for himself, and he did not rely on the Democratic Party apparatus in order to get him there. We talk about American exceptionalism when we look at guys like Robert Smalls as those exceptional Americans that we really need to praise and to pattern our lives after. The Democratic Party doesn't want that. They want you to subscribe to victimhood. And victimhood is very much uh, like the Jim Crow South. I'm not going to go as far as saying it was like slavery. No, it's more like Jim Crow. That's what victimhood does. And now the Democratic Party of today, the victimhood, does not necessarily have to mean along racial lines. Even though we do know that you know, a lot of the blacks in the inner cities are victims of the Democratic machine. But I also know plenty of white people who are just as much victims of the Democrat machine as well. Let's go ahead and not let people, uh, let, let's parade around because abortion is a big topic. Let's just go ahead and kill kids before they get out of the womb. We're going to kill grandma because we're going to subscribe to euthanasia. But we're going to bring in more uh, immigrants that we can't vet from overseas simply because we have a low birth rate here and we need people to fill jobs. We're going to let criminals go free, but then uh, we, gotta, we, we can't defend ourselves and so we've got to have anti-war. So what is up with the Democratic Party? And we, can, we get penalized for looking at success. Robert Smalls got it right. He got it right. The party of Lincoln unshackled from the necks of the necks of four million human beings. And they still do that today. North Star Oasis, I'm your host, Jeff Williams for Dallas Pearson Producer. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.